Welcome back, my friends. We're going to talk about really one of the most critical aspects of information technology, and that's information or data. You'll hear data and information, but information, well, it puts the information in information technology. And it's really why we're all here in the first place is the creation and management of information. So quick clarification, you might hear data and you might hear information. We're going to use them interchangeably right now. Um, some folks would say there's definitely a distinction, but for the purposes of this primer, we're just going to use information and data interchangeably. So one concept, I think probably the most important concept to take away from this is that IT exists to manage information. One more time, IT exists to manage information. That is why we're here. That's the whole purpose of information technology is to manage information. And let me tell you, that's a lot harder than it used to be because there's a lot more of it because we live in a crazy, amazing world right now that's totally driven by information. My grandfather's era, not so much driven by information. My dad's era, only in the last 10 years has it been driven by information. This whole crazy information age we live in, that's new. And for you millennials out there who think that's just par for the course, it is not. Like things like iTunes and Facebook, that's all new stuff. <laughs> it hasn't been around that long. But the crazy part is that everything you touch in our modern age creates information. Your personal finances, time management, music, medical records, insurance, all creates information and a whole lot of it too. Now, we've been on this rock for a long time and we've been able to write for about 5,000 years. I think it was the Babylonians, could have been the Mesopotamians, I get confused. One of those guys came up with written language about 5,000 years ago and it was pretty basic stuff. And as we progressed for the last 4,900 and I don't know, 70 plus years, we've really, there still hasn't been a huge amount of personal data. Maybe there was a will or a deed or a birth certificate or death certificate, but that was kind of the, the extent of personal data. There really wasn't a lot of it. People didn't have Facebook back in the day where they're posting like crazy. But all of a sudden, over the course of the last 5,000 years, our whole entire universe has been permeated by personal information. I just want to, I want to make that clear because that is a totally new concept in human evolution, brand new. And what's crazy is the amount of data we store is growing at a huge rate. Every day in the world, on average, we're creating 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. Now I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I had to look up what a quintillion was. I had no idea, because really it's not a number you deal with on a regular basis. Turns out a quintillion has 18 digits. So that that's a lot, yeah. And we're creating this every single day. And that number is growing. It could be like 2.7 quintillion now. Um, every day, exponentially, we're creating more and more data. So if we think about what's even crazier is 90% of the data in the world was created in the last two years. All right, just think about that for a second. 90% of the data that exists in the world today was created in the last two years. So what's it gonna be like in five years or 10 years? I mean, how much more data are we gonna create? Now, the upside on this is if you're actually looking at getting into a career in information technology, you got a lot of growth there. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry too much about job security, um, given that we're creating so much information every single day. Now, information comes from lots of places. We talked about social media, all those Facebook posts, about a billion people on Facebook. So yeah, they're creating a lot of data. Even sensors now, um, I got this thermostat at home, it's super smart, it has logs, it can tell me what the temperature was like a year ago, that's all data, going in a database. GPS, of course transactions, Amazon, you buy something, all that gets stored. Everything you do every single day creates information. So what do we do with all this information? How do we deal with it? How do we manage it? Because information has to be managed information requires management. Information without management is totally useless. It's just this stuff out there, these numbers. It has no relevant value. It doesn't do anything. It's not associated to anything. So information has to be managed. And the way we do that is we manage it with information systems. So information systems, we're able to create, categorize, sort, secure, and store, and access that information. So let's think about that for a second. Information is getting created. We're in Facebook, right? 
I create a post. Okay, it gets created. Then it gets categorized. Is this for like a select audience of folks or is this for general consumption? I'm putting some information with that post. Is it my birthday party or was it just my vacation I took? You gotta categorize that information. Then it's gotta be sorted. Hey, show me all my posts from the last two months. Maybe I'm sorting it by a date or by some sort of topic. Then you gotta be able to secure it. I only want people looking at my Facebook posts who have access to them. I'm gonna create a smaller, tighter group of folks who can get access to that information. Same with my medical records or my finances. I only want the people who are supposed to have access have access to that critical information. That data's gotta be stored somewhere. We talked about databases. Uh, I guarantee you Facebook has a lot of databases. So does all these other large consumer products where information is being created. Then you gotta be able to search for it. How am I searching for information? Am I, is there like, am I going to Google? Or is there another search engine as part of that information system I'm using? Information that can't be found is totally useless. That's one of my little mottos. If it can't be found, if it can't be searched, it's of no value. And then how am I gonna access that information? Am I gonna access it via my phone? Am I gonna access it in a browser? How am I getting at that information? All of these components need to come into consideration when building an information system. So information systems use all of the components that are part of IT. Now we talked about in the intro of the primer, all those different things that make up information technology, things like servers and networks and databases and user interfaces, all these things are used to build an information system. And information systems use most of the same components. Like every information system tends to have a database, tends to have a front end application, tends to be hosted on a server. It's just kind of bread and butter stuff. It's what you do. But each information system, even though they have a lot of commonality in terms of components, is designed to serve a specific purpose. And that purpose really de determines how that information system is being used, who's consuming that information, and how it's managed. So for example, we have things like personal computing and enterprise computing. Now these are gonna seem kind of self-explanatory, but personal computing or personal information is gonna be stuff like on your mobile phone, your personal computer, your Xbox, iTunes, Netflix, Facebook, those are great examples of personal computing. You know, iTunes, your that's your music. Netflix, those are the movies you're watching. Facebook, those are your posts. That's all information created as part of personal computing. Enterprise computing is, and if you hear the word enterprise, that generally means business. Enterprise and business kind of go hand in hand. That's gonna be more like financial systems. So think of all the computer systems at, at your work. You know, things like your customer relationship management, your HR systems, merchandising, resource planning, retail, all those big systems and the information they create, that's all part of enterprise computing. So in wrapping up, IT exists to manage information. Information technology, the reason it's there is to manage information. That's the kind of core little nugget, the takeaway. Next, 90% of the data in the world was created in the last two years. Now I throw that back out there just to give you some, some contextual history of where you stand in this whole evolution of information technology. The party's just getting started. We're gonna create a lot more, and this is a great time to think about information technology as a career path. Next, we manage information with information systems, and information systems are made up of all the core IT components that are used in IT, such as database, servers, applications, etc. All right. Thanks so much. Stick with us for the next program. Really appreciate it.